Hey Alpha 42, how are you going bud? Yeah, morning. Yeah, I thought I'd try a different time today. I thought I'd try and um, do more of an American type one so I can get the evening in America. Yeah, I bet bud. Coffee time for me. Yeah, well, I've been thinking of, yeah, try, changing it for a while. And Thursday night was really bad. I <laughs> had two people. So I thought, well, got to try some different times. So that is why. So I've got to play, paint the big gun now. So I've got to pick out which bits are which. So I think we'll just pick out the metal bits first, or what I see as the metal bits. Yeah. Where, whereabouts are you again? You're, you're mid-America, aren't you? <laughs> Canada, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I'll probably do, still do this evening as well. You know, I'll probably, because I'm up early, I'll do two or three hours here, this, like now. And then I'll have breakfast and probably have a snooze. I'll probably do this evening as well. So... Yeah, just see how it goes. I sort of want, I want to try and sort of, I've got to get more videos done for YouTube, so I might, I might, I might be cutting down the streaming soon anyway to concentrate more on that, but I'm not sure yet. Um, but it's, it's one of those things like, you know, if I'm getting eight or 10 people stream, when I'm streaming, that's fine. But if I'm going to start getting two, then it's like, am I better off spending the time doing videos, if you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. But we'll try and do a bit of painting here this morning, see how we go. See if we can get some more American and Canadian people on. And if not, then we'll, we'll revise. We'll do something different. But we're going to try and do some basic metallics first on the gun. So I'll get some basic colours mapped in. Yeah, oh, it's 8 o'clock there. Yeah, I think I just check the times. Like, I usually check with, like, Midwest America, like Chicago time. And I think it's seven o'clock there. Just gone seven o'clock, 7.15. So that's, I would say, sort of around that prime time, really. So I'm going to do, try and do a darker metal and then a lighter metal here on this gun. So I want to try and get a couple of areas. The trouble is with like painting a big gun like this, if you paint it all in the same colour, yeah, it just ends up looking a bit boring, like you've just painted it all one colour. So I'm trying to... So my, 
my metallic colors, colors I usually start with is usually I mix up the anthracite gray and a blue gray, sort of 50 50, and then I go quite light straight to the blue gray and then uh, gray blue and then to blue gray, which is really light. So for the darker metals, I'll start with the anthracite gray and build up to gray blue to make it darker, if you know what I mean. So we'll see how that goes. And then I'll do some different metals with the way I just said, starting lighter. But this is quite an unusual. Thing for me. I don't usually paint guns very often. I nearly do all fantasy. So this is something a little bit different. Try and get that darker metal in there. But the good news yesterday, Bard, was that my cables arrived for my printer. And I put the new cables in and my printer is working. So I'm actually start started doing some prints again. Did the first one last night and a part of it failed, but at least it's printing. I've got some new resin that I'm trying, so I haven't dialed the settings in yet. I think is the problem. case oh cool yeah I had it go a little while ago I haven't been able to print for over a month well longer than that even which, which sets did you get from AK did you get like the themed ones like NMM green or greens and blues Yellow night creature, but yeah, they're good. I remember I got the yellows and the reds. I'm not sure if I got the night creatures one or not.
color.
Oh, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. You've got more than enough there to begin with. Right, so you've got the same colour, model colour. Yeah, it's in, uh, interesting to see what you think of the AKs. You know, because like I say, it's like everyone sees things differently and everyone gets, like, are different with different things, if you know what I mean. But I, I love them. I think they're great. I do. Oh, you love. this gun we're actually going to see Let's pull a bit of it from the back
Hey, Leo Vive. How are you? Leo Vive. Is that right? How are you going? Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good with the purple, isn't it? So I've been painting, I've been painting this guy at the moment. And um, we're painting, this is his big gun that sits on the front here. So he's going to be like that. So. That's getting there. We're just getting started on the gun, so we're going to paint some some non-metallic sort of rough steel. And I got this guy done in the week. So it was also it was pretty good. It was good fun to paint. Quick, quick and easy. Just skin textures. So yeah, he was good. Oh, thank you, Bernard. And I'm also doing my, at the moment, I'm doing YouTube videos for this lady, which is Jerona from World of Warcraft. So she's coming out really nice. Really like her skin. The abs come out nice. And her hair is actually really nice. And she has this big, where is it? She has a big spiky thing that sits on her back here. So I'm not doing too much with the back here. But she has this thing, which is going to sort of sit up there. I'm painting that separately. <laughs> oh no, not the keyboard. Oh no. Yeah, you gotta put the needle in. I've done that so many times, you think, yeah, just just one more squeeze, one more squeeze, I'm sure it'll come out. <laughs> Everywhere. So. But yeah, this, this one, she's come out really nice. It's like some of the best skin tones, which I've been working on lately. I'm trying to get the skin tones a bit better. Um, and I had a practice piece the other day, which I did. So this was just for practice, just trying to do a more of a pale skin tone with a bit more contrast and color. But yeah, Chester Bennington. Yeah, my daughter's hero. 
she loves Chester so if I finish this she'll have this yeah he's cool the only thing is if I paint him I, I do because he's got tattoos with the sculpt the picture this ta is taken from the sculpt I've actually got the picture and he's got tattoos everywhere all over his chest and arms so I'd have to do that if I finished it so it may just stop there and he's got a misprint on his ear so yeah what I, I'm thinking about I would like to paint this one but this is quite a small print so if I do I'm going to reprint it sort of about this big sort of thing almost twice the size and then I'll paint him properly with the tattoos and that um, but at the moment he, he was just a I was just I've been sort of really trying to work hard on skin tones the last couple of weeks so he was like a real test piece for skin with some things I've been trying to learn right so that's that so let's try and go a little bit lighter and get a brush with an actual point on it which would be nice See if we can paint some little edge highlights on this, which will make it really pop. It looks a bit dull at the moment, but the little edge highlights will really make it jump out. Yeah, well, maybe I'll do that. See, if I did, if I did the Chester one, did the tattoos, then I'd, I'd film the whole process probably. But I've got, I've got maybe five or six full paints at the moment, all built up with videos, which I've, they've all been first cut edited, but I've got to go through and do all the voiceover bits and that. So what are you guys painting? What are you working on? Are you still working on that that bust alpha? Have we seen the new pictures of Evan Green? That looks pretty cool.
bothered by it. Well, with green, so if you see this green here, right? Yeah, yeah, show us. But if you see this green here, see how the shadows are not green? Right? So if you see, like up here, especially, it's not green. And here, see on the side of the face, this is not a green. And these here, it's not green. No. No, 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 almost. But let's do a little bit of theory here. So, when we look at green on the color wheel, dead opposite is red. Red is the perfect complement, right? But if you stick straight red in there, it can look a little bit odd. Right, so there's a little trick. I'll show you quickly. All right, so my mid-tone was this green, right? It's a very neutral, desaturated green, very mid-tone, all right? So what I did, I wanted the base color to be dark, so I took burnt red and deep green, right? And I'm going to show you what happens. So we've got green and red. So we already know they're perfect complements, right? So if we take those two colours, and you're going to see what happens. So we don't want pure red, but I don't want dark green. So if we mix those together, we get this sort of brown tone. But it's a very rich brown and you can change it's like a purpley brown almost I think I had it darker than that but it's a really nice brown yeah it's more that uh, sort of between the two yeah so it's like a purplish brown color almost if you had I'm going to say scale 75 paints almost like Arabic flesh or something, Arabic shadow, but a bit darker. But because I know, I know it's made up of red and green. So it actually works really well with shadow color. And I went straight over with, I had this green intermediate and I mixed a little bit of that base color in just to darken it a little bit to start with. Right, let's have a look at that. I think, I mean, purples are great for using shadows, like as you know I've done. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I like that green, but I would say the shadows look, or is that, hold on. Oh yeah, let's have a look at that. Yeah, no, that's good. I like that. But you see how your... The, the one thing I would say, and this is not... I'm not criticising, I'm just giving my personal view. So when I look at the abs and under the chest and stuff, the shadows are very black, which is fine, you know, if that's the look you want. Um, but you could make that look much more lively and vibrant. The face is good, the nose is really good. But I think you could make the more vibrant with some red or a burnt red glaze glazing into those shadows just to give them some vibrancy, some colour. 
because when we go into black we we actually got no color so there's no life there's there's no vibrancy in there at all but again it depends the look you want if you want that look then it, it's great you know but my my view on skin especially is it's always got some sort of blood under the skin some sort of color showing through there'll be how light works on the skin it's very rarely black um, but that, that's just my personal opinion but the painting looks really good looks really good bud so nothing wrong with the painting and I think the green looks better than what you had before But that looked okay before. Yeah. Yeah, I. You can build contrast and colours up with other elements in the model. But I always think if you if you paint something like that, which is predominantly skin, and the other parts are just supporting actors, and you want you want the skin to be the main focal point of the model so if if you can add some color and some vibrancy into certain parts of it even if you even if you say even if you pick it say like this and say well my light source is here so I'm going to focus a real light area like here and make that brighter more light that then it's going to emphasize that skin every more even more because it's going to make it look more dynamic and interesting and then what you can do is just darken the bits that are away from that like here and under the arms and under bits and around here so it really looks like light is shining from a direction rather than everywhere from all at once if you know what I mean 
but colour in the skin would, I I think, would improve it no end. You know. Yeah, the real, the thing I do a lot, and what I would suggest the same, I'm sure you have, is compare your model to really well, you know, these top painters, have a look at what they do with skin. You know, have a look at someone like Eric Swinson or Sergio, someone like that and ju just have a look at what makes those models pop what makes them really stand out and the thing i've noticed a lot when i look at these models especially busts if you look at people who paint busts you know when you look at the skin the color the the contrast from dark to light but the actual color contrast they get in that dark to light. That's what makes those models really stand out for me, really like, wow, look at what they've done with all the color in this skin, you know? Yeah, if you, I'm always amazed when you know, I was watching someone the other day, I can't remember who it was now, <clears throat> but painting a human skin and they had green on the palette, blue on the palette, and they were using it in different ways just to add these different tones to the skin. And it, it really just makes the model pop. You know, you're like, wow, look at the colour. Yeah. Yeah, no worries, bud. I mean, like I said, the biggest the biggest way to learn is through mimicry, copying others. Yeah, and that's that's what I do a lot. You know, I watch a lot of videos, I look at a lot of pictures. And you can learn so much when you just see someone else doing it and you just think, why have they got you know, green on the palette. Why are they using blue? But you can see what it produces. You know, and then you can copy that, mimic that into your own work. And to be honest, that's how they all did it. They copied other artists, they read books. It's only learning from others.
Yeah, well, that's that's the thing, isn't it? There's so many different elements to the technique. You know, it's the paint, it's the colour, it's the consistency of the paint, it's the loading the brush, the cleaning of the brush. It all, it all sort of adds up into the technique of how how you're getting paint on the model. You know, even how much paint you have on your brush. You know, that makes a huge difference. And also, a lot of people do things so differently. You know, I watched um, uh, a video from Ho Jose Da Vinci yesterday. And, you know, I've always been taught, you just load the brush, you know, maximum halfway up the bristles. And then, you avoid getting paint in the bris in the ferrule and loading the brush too much. And he does a video where he says, no, that's not true. You load it as much as you can, all the way up to the ferrule with thin paint, dry it off, do this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, that works for him. That's the way he paints, and he paints absolutely brilliantly. But I don't know you never know what is right and is wrong. Do you know what I mean? It's you have to take, you know, these words from people and then almost adapt it to yourself and try these things and see what works for you. Which all leads to the, you know, the bottom line is whatever gives you the best brush control is what works. Different strokes for different folks. You know what I mean? Alpha, thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. It was worth me getting up early now. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's it's quite. This is the thing, the the one thing that really baffles me about mini miniature painting. All right, and this is the number one thing for me is it's a bit like golf really so i used to play a lot of golf right and that although they're completely different there's similarities and that is when i when i watch miniature painters and i, I probably watch most of the top ones now i said and it always baffles me how you can watch someone like say um, Banshee you know, who's an excellent excellent painter no doubt about it right you know wonderful wonderful with colour style everything and yet he paints with the thickest paint you can imagine and he gets it all over the brushes and he slaps it on the model like you know, and you think, what the hell is he doing? A bit like Mark Maskelands, you know. And you just think, oh my God, this is such a mess. You know, and 10 minutes later, you're looking at a 
masterpiece. You're like, how did he get from there to there with that paint and that style? You know? And then you watch someone else like, say, Sebastian Archer or Angel Heraldes or something, I don't know, for instances, who are so work with really thin down paint and they're very meticulous about where they put each brush stroke. And it's just a completely different process. But it's about the results. You know, if you, at the end of it, if you understand what you're doing, it's just about the result. You know, the journey, how you got there, doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying it's a lot, it's very similar to golf. I know it's a strange analogy. But I used to play a lot of golf. And, you know, there is a textbook way of swinging the golf club, which they teach you, right? Which, you know, most people go for lessons and that's what they strive to learn. The proper way to do it. But, you'll go out and play on the course and you'll play with a guy who, swing, who swings the club who looks like an octopus falling out of a tree. You know, totally wrong. And, and I've played with these people a lot. And you just think, oh my God, how's this guy going to play? You know, you get to the end of the round and he's beaten you by five or six strokes. And you think, well, the hell did we do that? And like I say, it's about results. It doesn't matter how you get there. You know, the only thing that's important is what you get at the end of it, you know, your result. And if your miniature looks great, wonderful, then it doesn't matter how you did it. So you you find you have to find your own way of how to get the best results. That's the most important thing. You know, and I've, I've done it myself. I've, I've painted with really thick paint. You know, no dilution and loads on the brush. And I've painted good stuff. And I've also painted with paint like water. And still had good results. So it, it's sort of just got to find what suits you. and how you enjoy painting. You know, which is obviously, that is one of the most important things. You know, I, I find when I, when I try and paint with really thin paint, you know, like glazing a lot of the time on trying to put layers on with very thin layers, I, it's hard work for me and I don't enjoy it. You know, I like to be able to put a color on and see it. You know, glazing between layers is different and, and blending. I know that's a necessary part of what I do. But when I paint, I like to see the paint go on the model. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're getting somewhere with this now. We're starting to build up a good metal look. Yeah, well, he actually does glaze, but he does it with the airbrush. And it, it makes a lot of sense because rather than putting, you know, 
10, 15 layers on with a brush with very dilute paint. You can do it, you know, almost in one go, one couple of squirts with the airbrush and it's done. But again, this is this is my point. It's that's his technique, that's what he's learned. That's what works for him. You know? And you know it's it's like I said, his results you know, he, he's one of those I watch sometimes and think, oh my God, look at the, you know, the thick bloody lines he's putting on and these just strong highlighted colours that look really wrong. And yet, you know, he has a couple of squirts with the airbrush and it looks wonderful. But it's just the result that matters. It's starting to look okay, that is. I say this is the very much the darker metal effect I'm putting on. I'm not going to go crazy light with this. Yeah, that's exactly right about the base coat thickness. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm going to try and build up, like I say, I've got, I did my first light, which was a dark blue-gray, quite dark. And I'll highlight it up a certain amount. And then I only just touch highlight some bits of it. But now I'm at the point where I can actually start um, first highlighting other areas with the colour I've got. And they will be lighter. So you're going to end up with a dark black 
sort of metal, which I've painted right now, it's quite dark. And then we'll end up with lighter, shiny areas of metal. That makes sense. So like this bit I'm painting now, I want it to be shinier. So I'll paint more of it to take more of the black out. And then I'll highlight that up and it will look shiny compared to the other bits, you know what I mean? I only want a couple of bits like that. I actually want a bit more moisture in that. It's a bit too thick. Yeah, so it's quite a good trick actually that it's a sort of little it's a little trick of mine, or I'm sure others do it. So when I'm painting something like this like the black metal areas I'll start with the black and just add highlights so I did one highlight like that which was that anthracite grey and anthracite um, grey blue and then I'll highlight it up a certain amount so I've added more grey blue into it and then when I get to a certain level of light then I've known what I what I think will be the first highlight for the light areas so then I can start highlighting the lighter areas with that color so if you see here now the dark metal bits so I've gone almost as far as I want to go so the last little line highlights, the dots, are sort of the first layers for this shiny metal that I'm doing here. And then I'll just carry on highlighting to make them look more shiny. More of a chromey type effect, if you know what I mean. But it'll make the make the two areas look very different. Which is what I want. Like I said earlier, if you, if you paint all the elements the same, it's going to look a bit boring. So now we're going to just try and get a little, like a bright chrome effect on this bottom bit, just to make it look a bit different. So it doesn't need too much underneath. 
And I'll try and get a little shiny spot through there. So it's just, just trying to break up all the parts. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's the other thing to learn, bud. I know I'm preaching a lot at the moment. But, you know, just try everything. Try stuff and, it, you know, it's, it's like what you did before. It's, you can always repaint things. You know, go, yeah, I didn't like that, but I tried it. You know, I, I do that quite a bit still. I've got a bit of a pile of shame behind me. The stuff that I've tried things on and gone, yeah, that didn't work. But it's okay. Shiny spot. Pipes. The rest of the bits I'll try and do as a colour. After I've done this, I think. I don't think that's going to get seen that side. But I'm going to paint it anyway.
Right, liking that. It's good in there. Hmm. Yeah, red can be hard. Oh, I just look on some art stores online. You know, my, my old one is falling apart. Just We just bought a new one, but it's way too big. It's huge. But, all, all, you know, it just shows you. You, you can look it online as well. You go on Google and just put in colour wheel and you'll get it up, the image. But the turn bits are really helpful. So, like I say, with... The thing, this is very simple, easy color theory. So for your your alt eye, what what I tend to do with the color wheel is like, okay, the predominant color is green, right? So there's various color combinations you can use. So you can use pure green. Use red, like if you do the clothing or the armor red, it will look fantastic. But you can also use like what they call a triad. So if you use green, violet, purple, and orange, they will also work fantastic together. And you can also use these colors as highlights and shadows and tones within your colors. So if you have something green, and you do like little mid-tone flashes of orange and shadows of violet, it will look great. You know? That's what I tend to use, the triad and the pure complement. And I've, I've used it on a lot of miniatures. And I, there's, on YouTube, I've got a couple of videos about it, how I use the color wheel. So, but it, it's a really useful tool. And... You know, I've, I've been painting a long time, but I still get that out all the time to check colors. You know, if I'm painting something, I go, oh God, I've got this green, what, what should I use with it? And I'll check it all the time. It's a fantastic tool. Right, so I'm gonna go up to pure blue gray now so we'll see what the difference is with that how much kind of sh tone of shift not a lot a little bit I might get some of that in there a little bit of blue gray now from gray from gray blue to blue gray yeah look it up but I mean it's it, there's something ridiculous like they cost something like two dollars. If you go to an art store, you'll, you'll pay about two dollars. And they really are, it's one of the most invaluable tools. You know, I, I can't do without mine. I really can't. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll show you a really good example actually. It's not the best miniature, but a good example. So this is really a miniature I painted recently, right? And I purely use the color wheel, all right? So I painted this miniature recently, okay? Now the way I sort of use it is I started with the skin and I knew I wanted it to be like this blue green color all right so I wanted it to be blue green the skin that's the predominant color so when I look at blue green I've got red orange and I've got red violet and I've got yellow orange right so I knew there was going to be this large goldish effect which is sort of my yellow orange yellowy color but then, see all the armor parts, all here, is all done with red violet. And on here is red violet, there's red violet on here. So I know they're perfect complements. And the scales, 
are all done with red orange. So all four colours are complementary or complementary to each other. So I knew as soon as I started with the blue green, I looked up those colours and thought, yes, that's what I want to use. They're good colours. And I made sure I incorporated those along with any neutral colour is fine. Bright browns, whites, buff, black. They'll they'll mix with anything. You know? So that gave me the colour scheme. It was just where I put the colours. You know, yeah, and it is. Complementary colours are always pleasing to the eye. You can break rules occasionally with colour. It's you know, there's no you know, in fantasy it doesn't mean a colour has to be here or there. But if you stick to complementary things, it does become more pleasing to the eye when you look at it.
Not a bit thick. There. Yeah, she's fine, mate. I don't know what she's doing at the moment. What's she doing? What are you sitting over there? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hi. Just one. Um, Alpha just asked, how are you doing? What are you doing? I'm good, Alpha. How are you? <laughs> Because we're doing an early morning stream here, like it's just gone 9.30 in the morning, I think she's, she's sitting there cross with me because she wants to have breakfast. So she's waiting for me, keeps glaring at me with strange looks. What? She does, because she's hungry. Uh, what are you no, nothing darling. Alright, so we're starting to get these nice elements now, which I like. <laughs> yeah, she is dangerous when she's hungry, mate. And believe me, she's hungry 90% of the time. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, what? Oh, oh, you're there. I am here. Ah. Yeah. I was just commenting how um, you enjoy your food, don't you, darling? Oh, you bloody liar. <laughs> Darling, it, it's actually uh, it's okay though because like she doesn't drink and doesn't smoke, so that's her one vice is she likes her food, which is a good thing. And cola and Pepsi. Is cola and Pepsi mad?
Right, so I want to build up the intensity of the shiny spots now. So we're going to go much lighter. Quite, quite a bit thinner. And try and get the shiny chromey bits. Hopefully a little bit more shiny. Ramens and cheese. What's ramens? Is that like crackers?
noodles. Oh yeah, of course. Pretty cool. Happy with that. A bit of that, and we get a bit of light.
Right, that's the first part of the gun. Done. So we've got most of my black metal and shiny metal. A couple of tidy up bits with black I need to do later. But I'm pretty pleased with how that's going. I've definitely got two different metal elements there. These are clearly more shiny which look pretty cool and these bits are dark and the other bits I'm going to paint coloured 
and these will be like a brassy colour, like black to brass in the middle. And this one. So I'll do those tonight. You know, I'm going to stop there because I'm hungry. Got to get some breakfast now. Mrs. Mrs. Brushmaster is going mental there. She's starving, hungry. She's falling apart with hunger. So I've got to go and feed her. So. All right then, Alpha. <laughs> Try not to, bud. Um, maybe see you later tonight, bud. See ya! <laughs> see ya, bud. <laughs>